A black woman marries a disabled man and gets the biggest surprise of her life on her wedding day. You won't believe what happens next. Before we get into the story, comment below where you are tuning in from. And if you enjoy this tale, don't forget to subscribe. The warm June sun beat down on Sarah Thompson's pale skin as she maneuvered her wheelchair through the crowded farmer's market in downtown Boston. At 28, Sarah was a picture of resilience, her emerald eyes gleaming with determination despite the challenges life had thrown her way. Born with a rare form of muscular dystrophy, she had never known a life without wheels, but that hadn't stopped her from pursuing her dreams of becoming a successful graphic designer. As Sarah navigated between stalls overflowing with vibrant produce and artisanal crafts, she couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. It wasn't the usual curious or pitying glances she often received. This felt different, more intense. She turned her head, scanning the crowd, and that's when she saw him. Leaning against a nearby lamppost was a tall, handsome man with sandy blonde hair and piercing blue eyes. Unlike Sarah, he stood on his own two feet, but there was something about the way he held himself that caught her attention. His left arm hung limply at his side, and a slight tremor ran through his right hand as he raised it to brush a stray lock of hair from his forehead. Their eyes met, and for a moment the bustling market seemed to fade away. The man's lips curled into a shy smile, and Sarah felt her heart skip a beat. She had never believed in love at first sight, but at that moment she began to reconsider. Lost in thought, Sarah didn't notice the uneven cobblestone beneath her wheels until it was too late. Her chair hit a particularly deep groove, and she felt herself begin to tip. Panic surged through her as she braced for impact, but it never came. Instead, she felt a strong arm wrap around her shoulders, steadying her chair. Whoa there, are you okay? A deep voice asked, tinged with concern. Sarah looked up to find herself face to face with the man she had been admiring from afar. Up close, she could see the worry etched across his handsome features and a faint scar that ran along his jawline. I, yes, thank you, Sarah stammered, feeling a blush creep up her cheeks. That could have been a nasty fall. The man smiled and Sarah noticed how it lit up his entire face. I'm glad I was here to help. I'm Jack, by the way, Jack Anderson. Sarah Thompson, she replied, extending her hand. As Jack shook it, Sarah couldn't help but notice the slight tremor in his grip. It's nice to meet you, Jack. An awkward silence fell between them, broken only by the chatter of nearby shoppers and the distant sound of a street musician playing a melancholy tune on a saxophone. So, Jack began, rubbing the back of his neck with his good hand, do you come to the market often? I don't think I've seen you around before. Sarah shook her head. No, this is my first time. I just moved to Boston last week for a new job. I'm still trying to get my bearings. Jack's face lit up. Well, as a lifelong Bostonian, I'd be happy to show you around sometime. If you're interested, that is. Sarah hesitated for a moment. She had sworn off dating after her last relationship ended in heartbreak, but there was something about Jack that made her want to take a chance. I'd like that, she said finally, surprised by her own boldness. They exchanged numbers, and as Sarah watched Jack disappear into the crowd, she couldn't shake the feeling that her life was about to change in ways she never could have imagined. Over the next few weeks, Sarah and Jack's relationship blossomed. They explored the city together, visiting historic landmarks and hidden gems that only a local would know. Sarah learned that Jack was a former firefighter who had been injured on the job two years ago leaving him with limited use of his left arm and chronic pain that sometimes made even the simplest tasks a challenge. Despite their physical limitations, or perhaps because of them, Sarah and Jack found a deep connection. They understood each other in ways that others couldn't. Sharing both the frustrations and triumphs that came with navigating a world that wasn't always accommodating to their needs. On a warm evening in late July, as they sat on a blanket in the Boston Public Garden, watching the swan boats glide across the pond, Jack turned to Sarah with a serious expression. Sarah, he began, his voice trembling slightly, these past few weeks have been the happiest of my life. I know it might seem fast, 
but I've never been more certain of anything. I love you, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Will you marry me? Sarah's heart raced as she looked into Jack's earnest blue eyes. A part of her wanted to say yes immediately, to throw caution to the wind and embrace the fairy tale romance she had always dreamed of. But another part, the practical side that had been shaped by years of disappointment and struggle, held her back. Jack, I, I love you too, she said softly, watching as his face lit up with hope. But marriage? We've only known each other for a month. Don't you think we should take more time to really get to know each other? Jack's smile faltered slightly, but he nodded in understanding. You're right, of course. I got carried away. It's just, when you know, you know, you know. Sarah couldn't help but laugh at his fumbling words. I do know, she said, reaching out to take his hand. And I'm not saying no. I'm just saying not yet. Let's give ourselves some time to really build a foundation for our relationship. If it's meant to be, we'll know. Jack squeezed her hand gently. You're right, and I'll wait as long as it takes. You're worth it, Sarah Thompson. As they sat there, watching the sun set over the Boston skyline, Sarah felt a mix of emotions swirling within her. Joy at finding someone who understood her so completely. Fear of the unknown future that lay ahead and a nagging sense that there was more to Jack's story than he was letting on. Little did Sarah know that her instincts were right. Jack was hiding something, a secret that would test their love in ways she could never have imagined. As the weeks turned into months and their relationship deepened, the weight of Jack's secret began to take its toll. Sarah noticed small changes in Jack's behavior. He became more withdrawn, often lost in thought. There were hushed phone calls that ended abruptly when she entered the room and mysterious appointments that he refused to explain. Each time she tried to broach the subject, Jack would deflect with a charming smile and a change of topic. By the time Christmas rolled around, Sarah couldn't ignore the growing distance between them any longer. As they sat in her cozy apartment, surrounded by twinkling lights and the scent of freshly baked cookies, she decided it was time to confront the issue head on. Jack, she said, her voice steady despite the nervousness fluttering in her stomach. We need to talk. I know something's been bothering you and I can't help but feel like you're pulling away from me. Whatever it is, I want you to know that you can trust me. We're in this together. Jack's face crumpled and for a moment, Sarah saw a vulnerability in him that he had never allowed her to see before. He took a deep breath his hand trembling more than usual as he reached for hers. Sarah, I... I haven't been entirely honest with you, he began, his voice barely above a whisper. There's something I need to tell you, something that might change everything between us. But I need you to know that my love for you is real. It's the most real thing in my life right now. Sarah felt her heart race, torn between the desire to comfort Jack and the fear of what his revelation might mean for their future. As she opened her mouth to respond, a sharp knock at the door interrupted them. Jack's face paled, and he stood up abruptly. I'm sorry, I, I have to go, he said, grabbing his coat. I promise I'll explain everything soon. Just, please, don't give up on us yet. Before Sarah could protest, Jack was out the door, leaving her alone with a thousand questions and a growing sense of dread. As she wheeled herself to the window, watching Jack's retreating figure disappear into the snowy night, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that their love story was about to take a turn she never could have anticipated. Little did she know, the biggest surprise of her life was yet to come, and it would forever change the course of their relationship. The weeks following Jack's abrupt departure on Christmas Eve were a blur of confusion and heartache for Sarah. She threw herself into her work designing logos and websites with a fervor that both impressed and concerned her colleagues. But no matter how busy she kept herself, she couldn't shake the memory of Jack's troubled face or the weight of his unspoken secret. It was a crisp February morning when Sarah's phone buzzed with a text from Jack. Her heart leaped into her throat as she read the message. Want, Sarah, I'm ready to explain everything. 
Meet me at the public garden at noon? J. With trembling hands, Sarah replied with a simple, Okay, and began preparing for what she knew would be a life-changing conversation. The garden was quiet, a stark contrast to the bustling summer day when Jack had first proposed. Sarah maneuvered her wheelchair along the snow-dusted paths, her breath forming small clouds in the cold air. She spotted Jack sitting on a bench near the pond, his shoulders hunched against the chill. As she approached, Jack looked up, his blue eyes filled with a mixture of relief and apprehension. Sarah, he breathed, standing to greet her. Thank you for coming. Sarah nodded, her voice caught in her throat. She positioned her wheelchair beside the bench, and Jack sat back down, his hands clasped tightly in his lap. I owe you an explanation, Jack began, his voice low and strained, and an apology. I should have been honest with you from the beginning, but I was afraid, afraid of losing you, afraid of facing the truth myself. Sarah reached out and placed her hand on Jack's trembling ones. Whatever it is, Jack, we can face it together. Just tell me. Taking a deep breath, Jack launched into his story. Two years ago, when I had my accident at the fire station, it wasn't just my arm that was affected. The doctors, they found something else. A tumor in my brain. Sarah gasped, her hand tightening on Jack's. Oh, Jack, it's inoperable, he continued, his voice breaking. The treatments I've been undergoing, they're experimental. They've managed to slow the growth, but... He trailed off, unable to finish the sentence. The weight of Jack's words hung heavy in the air between them. Sarah's mind raced, piecing together all the little inconsistencies and odd behaviors that now made perfect sense. The mysterious appointments, the mood swings, the tremors that seemed to worsen over time. Why didn't you tell me? Sarah asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Jack's eyes welled with tears. I thought I could beat it. I thought if I just fought hard enough, I could have a normal life, a future with you, but as time went on and the treatment started to fail, I realized I was being selfish. You deserve someone who can promise you a lifetime, not... He gestured helplessly at himself. Sarah felt a surge of emotions, anger at being kept in the dark, fear for Jack's life, and an overwhelming sense of love that threatened to consume her. Jack Anderson she said firmly, causing him to look up in surprise. Don't you dare make decisions about what I deserve without consulting me. I love you, all of you, including the parts that are scared and sick and uncertain. But Sarah, Jack protested, I can't ask you to tie yourself to a dying man. It's not fair to you. Life isn't fair, Sarah retorted, a fire blazing in her green eyes. Do you think it was fair that I was born with muscular dystrophy? That you were injured saving others? We don't get to choose the hand we're dealt, Jack. We only get to choose how we play it. She took a deep breath, steadying herself before continuing. I choose you, Jack. I choose us. Whatever time we have, whether it's 50 years or five months, I want to spend it with you, if you'll have me. Jack stared at her in awe, a mix of love and disbelief etched across his features. Sarah, are you... Are you proposing to me? A small smile tugged at Sarah's lips. I guess I am. So what do you say, Jack Anderson? Will you marry me? For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath. Then, with a sob that was half laughter and half cry, Jack nodded. Yes, he choked out. God, yes. They came together in a fierce embrace, tears mingling as they held each other close. As they pulled apart, Sarah couldn't help but laugh. Well, this isn't exactly how I imagined my proposal would go. Jack chuckled, wiping his eyes. Nothing about us has been conventional. Why start now? As they sat in the garden, making plans and promises, Sarah felt a sense of peace wash over her. The road ahead would be challenging, filled with doctor's appointments and difficult decisions, but they would face it together. The next few months were a whirlwind of activity. Sarah and Jack decided to have a small, intimate ceremony in the Boston Public Garden where their relationship had blossomed. They worked tirelessly to plan a wedding that accommodated both of their needs, 
determined to create a day that celebrated their love and resilience. Sarah's parents, initially concerned about the whirlwind romance and Jack's health, came around after seeing the depth of their daughter's happiness. Jack's family, a close-knit group who had been supporting him through his treatments, welcomed Sarah with open arms, grateful for the joy she had brought into their son's life. As the wedding day approached, Sarah threw herself into every detail, from designing their invitations to choosing flowers that would complement both her wheelchair and Jack's cane, which he now used on his bad days. She was determined to make every moment count, to create memories that would sustain them through whatever challenges lay ahead. The night before the wedding, as Sarah sat in her apartment putting the finishing touches on her vows, she received an unexpected call from Dr. Melissa Chen, Jack's oncologist. Sarah, Dr. Chen said, her voice filled with an emotion Sarah couldn't quite place. I'm sorry to call so late, but I have some news about Jack's latest test results. Is he with you? Sarah's heart raced. No, he's staying with his parents tonight. What is it? Is everything okay? There was a pause on the other end of the line, and Sarah braced herself for the worst. But Dr. Chen's next words took her completely by surprise. Sarah, I don't quite know how to say this, but the tumor is shrinking significantly. The latest treatment seems to be working in a way we never expected. Sarah's hand flew to her mouth, tears springing to her eyes. What, what does this mean? She asked, hardly daring to hope. It means we have reason to be cautiously optimistic, Dr. Chen replied, her own voice thick with emotion. Jax's prognosis has improved dramatically. We can't make any guarantees, but if this trend continues, he may have many more years ahead of him than we originally thought. As the full impact of Dr. Chen's words sank in, Sarah felt a wave of emotions wash over her, relief, joy, and an overwhelming sense of gratitude. She thanked the doctor profusely, promising to bring Jack in for a full consultation after their honeymoon. As she hung up the phone, Sarah sat in stunned silence, tears streaming down her face. The future that had seemed so uncertain now held the promise of time, time to love, to grow, to build a life together. For a moment, Sarah considered calling Jack to share the news, but as she reached for her phone, she hesitated. Tomorrow was their wedding day, a day they had both feared might be overshadowed by the specter of Jack's illness. Now, she had the power to transform it into a true celebration of new beginnings. With a smile, Sarah turned back to her vows, her heart full of hope and her mind brimming with plans for the surprise she would deliver at the altar. As she wrote, she realized that their love story, with all its twists and turns, was far from over. In fact, the most beautiful chapter was just about to begin. Little did Sarah know, as she drifted off to sleep with dreams of tomorrow dancing in her head, that the biggest surprise of her life was still yet to come, a surprise that would test the very foundations of the love she and Jack had built. The morning of Sarah and Jack's wedding dawned clear and bright, a perfect June day that seemed to mirror the hope blossoming in Sarah's heart. As she sat in the bridal suite of the small chapel adjacent to the Boston Public Garden, her mother fussing over her hair and her best friend Lisa. Adjusting the delicate lace of her dress, Sarah could barely contain her excitement. You're practically glowing, Lisa remarked, a knowing smile on her face. I take it those wedding night jitters have turned into anticipation? Sarah laughed, a light blush coloring her cheeks. Something like that, she replied, thinking of the wonderful news she was keeping secret. Her hand strayed to the carefully folded piece of paper in her lap, her revised wedding vows hurriedly rewritten in the early hours of the morning to incorporate Dr. Chen's revelation. As the final preparations were made, Sarah's father, Robert, entered the room, his eyes misting over at the sight of his daughter in her wedding gown. You look beautiful, sweetheart, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Are you ready? Sarah nodded, taking a deep breath. More than ready, Dad. Let's do this. With practiced ease, Robert helped Sarah into her wheelchair, which had been decorated with sprays of white roses and greenery to match her bouquet. 
As they made their way to the chapel doors, Sarah felt a flutter of nervous excitement in her stomach. This was it, the moment that would change everything. The small gathering of friends and family stood as the doors opened and the first strains of music filled the air. Sarah's breath caught in her throat as she saw Jack standing at the altar, looking handsome in his dark suit, his blue eyes shining with love and unshed tears. As Robert guided Sarah's wheelchair down the aisle, she couldn't take her eyes off Jack. His left arm was still held close to his body, a reminder of the challenges they had faced and overcome together. But today, he stood tall and strong, a picture of determination and hope. When they reached the altar, Jack stepped forward, taking Sarah's hand in his. You're breathtaking, he whispered, his voice filled with awe. The ceremony began, a beautiful blend of traditional vows and personal touches that reflected Sarah and Jack's unique journey. When it came time for them to share their personal vows, Sarah's heart raced with anticipation. Jack went first, his voice steady as he promised to love and cherish Sarah through whatever life might bring. You've shown me what true strength looks like, he said, his eyes never leaving hers. With you by my side, I feel like I can face anything. As Jack finished, Sarah took a deep breath, unfolding the paper in her lap. Jack, she began, her voice clear and strong. When we met, I thought I knew what love was, but you've shown me that real love is so much more than I ever imagined. It's standing by each other through the darkest times, finding joy in the smallest moments, and never giving up hope. She paused, her eyes shining with unshed tears. Last night, I received some news that I've been waiting to share with you. Dr. Chen called. Mm. She watched as understanding dawned on Jack's face, his eyes widening in disbelief. The treatment is working, Jack. The tumor is shrinking. We have hope. Hope for more time, more adventures, more love than we ever dared to dream. A collective gasp went through the assembled guests, followed by muffled sobs and whispers of joy. Jack stood frozen, tears streaming down his face as he processed Sarah's words. So, today, Sarah continued, her voice thick with emotion, I'm not just promising to love you, for better or, or, or for worse, in sickness and in health. I'm promising to love you through every moment of the long, beautiful life we now have stretching out before us. I promise to be your partner, your cheerleader, and your best friend. I promise to never take a single day for granted and to face whatever comes our way, good or bad together. As Sarah finished her vows, there wasn't a dry eye in the chapel. Jack fell to his knees beside her wheelchair, pulling her into a fierce embrace. I love you, he whispered, his voice choked with emotion. God, I love you so much. The rest of the ceremony passed in a blur of happy tears and heartfelt words. As the officiant pronounced them husband and wife, the chapel erupted in cheers and applause. Sarah and Jack shared a kiss that was filled with promise, sealing their vows and their future together. The reception that followed was a joyous celebration, with friends and family coming together to share in Sarah and Jack's happiness. Dr. Chen, who had been invited as a guest, found herself the center of attention as she explained the promising developments in Jack's treatment. As the evening wore on, Sarah and Jack shared their first dance, with Jack carefully supporting Sarah as she stood from her wheelchair, swaying gently in his arms. The love between them was palpable, filling the room with a warmth that touched everyone present. Later, as they cut the cake and laughed with their guests, Sarah couldn't help but marvel at the twists and turns that had brought them to this moment. She caught Jack's eye across the room and the look they shared was one of pure contentment and excitement for the future. As the reception wound down and the newlyweds prepared to leave for their honeymoon, Sarah's father approached them, his eyes twinkling with mischief. I have one more surprise for you two, he said, gesturing for them to follow him outside. Curious, Sarah and Jack made their way out of the reception hall, surrounded by their cheering guests. What they saw made them both gasp in delight. Parked at the curb was a sleek, black, accessible van, complete with a wheelchair ramp and hand controls. 
A big red bow adorned the hood, and a banner reading Just Married was stretched across the back. Dad, Sarah exclaimed, her eyes wide with surprise. Is this... Robert nodded, grinning widely. It's yours. Your mother and I, along with Jack's parents and your friends, all chipped in. We wanted you to have the freedom to go wherever your hearts desire on your honeymoon and beyond. Overwhelmed with emotion, Sarah and Jack thanked everyone profusely. As they prepared to depart, showered with rice and well wishes, Sarah couldn't help but feel that this was the beginning of an incredible new chapter in their lives. As Jack helped Sarah into the passenger seat and stowed her wheelchair in the back, she caught a glimpse of their reflection in the car's window. They were an unconventional couple, to be sure, a woman in a wheelchair and a man with a visible disability. But in that moment, all Sarah saw was love, strength, and endless possibility. As they drove off into the night, Sarah's hand intertwined with Jack's, she felt a sense of peace and excitement wash over her. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. Their love had already overcome so much, it could overcome anything. Little did Sarah know, as they embarked on their honeymoon adventure, that the biggest test of their love was yet to come. A surprise that would shake the very foundations of the life they had just begun to build together. The first few weeks of Sarah and Jack's married life were nothing short of blissful. Their honeymoon, a road trip along the scenic coast of Maine in their new accessible van, was filled with laughter, adventure, and the kind of deep conversations that come with the realization of a future suddenly stretched out before them. As they sat on a secluded beach, watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of pink and gold, Jack turned to Sarah, his eyes shining with a mix of love and determination. I've been thinking, he said, his voice soft but resolute. I want to go back to work. Sarah's eyebrows shot up in surprise. Are you sure? I mean, with your treatments and everything. Jack nodded, reaching out to take their hand. The treatments are working, Sarah. I'm feeling stronger every day. And I miss it. The sense of purpose. The feeling of making a difference. I can't go back to active duty, but maybe I could work in fire prevention or education. Sarah squeezed his hand, a proud smile spreading across her face. If that's what you want, then I'm behind you 100%. We'll figure it out together. Their return to Boston was marked by a flurry of activity. Jack threw himself into physical therapy with renewed vigor, determined to regain as much strength and mobility as possible. Sarah, inspired by her husband's determination, decided to take on more challenging projects at work, pushing the boundaries of her own creativity. It was on a crisp autumn morning, as Sarah was preparing for an important client meeting, that she received a call that would change everything. Mrs. Anderson? A female voice asked when Sarah answered. This is Nurse Jenkins from Boston General Hospital. I'm calling about your husband, Jack. There's been an incident. Sarah's heart plummeted. What kind of incident? Is he okay? He's stable, Nurse Jenkins assured her, but he collapsed during his physical therapy session. The doctors are running tests now, but they'd like you to come in as soon as possible. The next few hours passed in a blur of fear and uncertainty. Sarah raced to the hospital, her mind conjuring worst-case scenarios with every passing minute. When she finally reached Jack's room, she found him propped up in bed, looking pale but alert. Sarah, he said, relief evident in his voice, as she wheeled herself to his bedside. I'm so sorry to scare you like this. Before Sarah could respond, Dr. Chen entered the room, her face grave. Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, she began, I'm afraid I have some difficult news. Sarah reached for Jack's hand, gripping it tightly, as Dr. Chen explained that the latest scans showed the tumor had not only stopped shrinking, but had begun to grow again at an alarming rate. The treatment that had given them so much hope was no longer effective. We have other options, Dr. Chen assured them, outlining a new, more aggressive treatment plan. But I want you both to be prepared. The road ahead will be challenging. As Dr. Chen left them to process the news, Sarah and Jack sat in stunned silence. 
the future they had so recently begun to plan seemed to crumble around them. I'm sorry, Jack whispered, his voice breaking. I thought we had more time. Sarah felt tears streaming down her face, but she shook her head firmly. No, Jack, don't you dare apologize. We're in this together, remember? For better or for worse. The weeks that followed were a test of strength, love, and resilience. Jack's new treatment regimen was brutal, leaving him weak and often in pain. Sarah juggled her work responsibilities with caring for Jack, determined to be there for every appointment, every setback, and every small victory. Their friends and family rallied around them, offering support in countless ways. Lisa took over some of Sarah's projects at work, allowing her to spend more time at the hospital. Jack's former colleagues from the fire department organized a fundraiser to help with the mounting medical bills. Even Sarah's parents, who had initially been skeptical of their whirlwind romance, became pillars of support, often staying at the apartment to help out when Sarah needed to work. Through it all, Sarah and Jack's love for each other only grew stronger. They found moments of joy in the midst of their struggles, laughing over bad hospital food, having movie marathons during Jack's good days, and simply holding each other through the long nights. One evening, as they sat in the hospital garden during one of Jack's brief respites from treatment, he turned to Sarah with a serious expression. I want you to know, he said, his voice soft but steady, that if things don't, if I don't, don't, Sarah interrupted, her voice fierce. Don't you dare say goodbye, Jack Anderson. We're not giving up. Jack smiled, reaching out to cup her cheek. I'm not giving up, love. I'm just saying that no matter what happens, these months with you have been the best of my life. You've given me more love and happiness than I ever thought possible. Sarah leaned into his touch, tears glistening in her eyes. And we're going to have so many more months, years, together. I believe that, Jack. I have to. As they sat there, the setting sun casting a warm glow over the garden, Sarah was struck by the realization that this, this moment of quiet love and unwavering support, was what true strength looked like. It wasn't about physical ability or the absence of fear. It was about facing whatever life threw at you with grace, determination, and an open heart. Little did Sarah know, as she and Jack made their way back to his hospital room, hand in hand, that their journey was far from over. The biggest challenge and the most unexpected twist in their love story was yet to come, waiting just around the corner to test the very foundations of their relationship in ways they could never have imagined. As winter descended upon Boston, bringing with it a blanket of snow and biting winds, Sarah found herself facing a storm of a different kind. Jack's condition had stabilized somewhat, allowing him to return home, but the grueling treatments left him weak and often despondent. Sarah's days became a delicate balance of work, caregiving, and trying to maintain some semblance of normalcy in their lives. It was on a particularly challenging day, when Jack had barely been able to keep down his breakfast, and Sarah was running on little more than coffee and sheer determination that the doorbell rang. Puzzled, as they weren't expecting any visitors, Sarah wheeled herself to the door and opened it to find a striking woman in her mid-thirties standing there, her green eyes wide with apprehension. Can I help you? Sarah asked, noting the woman's nervous demeanor. The woman took a deep breath. My name is Emily. Emily Dawson. I'm... I'm looking for Jack Anderson. Is he here? Sarah felt a knot form in her stomach. There was something about the way this woman said Jack's name, a familiarity that set off alarm bells in her mind. He is. I'm his wife, Sarah. May I ask what this is about? Emily's face paled. His wife? Oh, God. I... I think we need to talk. All of us. The next hour was a blur of revelation and emotion as Emily's story unfolded. She and Jack had been high school sweethearts, deeply in love and planning a future together. But Jack, eager to pursue his dream of becoming a firefighter, had ended the relationship to focus on his training. Heartbroken, Emily had left town only to discover weeks later that she was pregnant. 
I tried to reach him, Emily explained, her voice trembling, but he had changed his number and his parents. They told me he didn't want any distractions. I was young and scared, so I decided to raise our child on my own. Sarah sat in stunned silence, her mind reeling. She looked over at Jack, who had joined them in the living room, his face a mask of shock and disbelief. Our child, Jack whispered, his voice hoarse. I, I have a child. Emily nodded, tears streaming down her face. A daughter, Lily, she's 14 now, and she's, she's sick, Jack. She needs a kidney transplant, and I'm not a match. I've spent years trying to track you down, hoping you might be... The room fell silent as the weight of Emily's words sank in. Sarah felt as though the ground had disappeared beneath her, leaving her free-falling through a whirlwind of emotion. Anger at the secret kept for so long, fear for this unknown child's life, and a deep, aching sympathy for the pain etched on both Jack and Emily's faces. Jack was the first to break the silence. I want to help he said, his voice firm despite the tears in his eyes. Whatever Lily needs, I'll do it, but... He trailed off, looking at Sarah with a mixture of love and apprehension. Sarah took a deep breath, steadying herself. Of course we'll help, she said, surprising herself with the strength in her voice. Emily, can you tell us more about Lily's condition? As Emily began to explain the details of Lily's illness and the urgency of finding a donor, Sarah found her mind racing. The timing couldn't have been worse, with Jack's own health so precarious. And yet, as she looked at her husband, she saw a spark in his eyes that had been missing for weeks, a sense of purpose, of hope. The next few days were a whirlwind of medical tests and emotional conversations. Jack was indeed a match for Lily, but his own health issues complicated matters. The doctors were hesitant to perform the transplant surgery with Jack's weakened condition, fearing it could jeopardize both his recovery and the success of the transplant. As they grappled with this impossible situation, Sarah found herself forming an unexpected bond with Emily. Despite the awkwardness of their circumstances, they shared a common goal, protecting and supporting the people they loved. It was during one of their late night conversations as Jack slept in the next room that Emily turned to Sarah with tears in her eyes. I'm so sorry, she whispered. I never meant to disrupt your lives like this. If I had known Jack was ill. Sarah reached out, taking Emily's hand. You did what you had to do for your daughter. I understand that. And Jack, he needs this too. I've seen a change in him since you told us about Lily. It's like he's found a new reason to fight. As the days turned into weeks, a plan began to take shape. Jack's doctors agreed to intensify his treatments, hoping to strengthen him enough for the transplant surgery. In the meantime, Sarah and Emily worked together to arrange for Lily to come to Boston, allowing her to receive care at the same hospital as Jack and giving father and daughter a chance to get to know each other. The day Lily arrived was one Sarah would never forget. As she watched Jack meet his daughter for the first time, she saw a myriad of emotions play across his face. Wonder, love, regret, and a fierce determination that brought tears to her eyes. Lily, a petite girl with Jack's blue eyes and Emily's dark hair, approached her father's wheelchair with a mix of shyness and curiosity. Hi, she said softly, I'm Lily. Jack reached out, gently taking her hand, Hi, Lily. I'm, I'm your dad, and I'm so, so sorry I haven't been there for you. But I promise, from now on, I'll do everything I can to make it up to you. As Sarah watched this tender moment unfold, she felt a shift within herself. The anger and hurt she had initially felt at the revelation of Jack's past melted away, replaced by a deep sense of love and purpose. This was her family now, unconventional, unexpected, but bound together by love and the shared goal of healing. The weeks that followed were a roller coaster of emotions and medical procedures. Jack threw himself into his treatments with renewed vigor, determined to be strong enough for the surgery that would save his daughter's life. Sarah found herself taking on the role of caregiver, not just for Jack, but for Lily as well.
coordinating doctor's appointments, and offering comfort during difficult days. As the date of the transplant surgery approached, Sarah couldn't help but feel a mix of hope and fear. The procedure carried risks for both Jack and Lily, and there was no guarantee of success. But as she looked at her husband and his daughter, both fighting so hard to live, to connect, to make up for lost time, she knew that they had to try. The night before the surgery, as Sarah sat by Jack's hospital bed, holding his hand and trying to project a calm she didn't feel, he turned to her with a look of such love and gratitude that it took her breath away. Sarah, he said softly, I don't know what I did to deserve you, but I thank God every day that you're in my life. Whatever happens tomorrow, I want you to know that you've made me happier than I ever thought possible. Sarah leaned in, pressing her forehead against his. We're going to get through this, Jack, all of us, together, and then we're going to have the most amazing, unconventional, beautiful life. I promise you that. As they held each other, drawing strength from their love, Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that tomorrow would bring yet another twist in their extraordinary journey. Little did she know, as she drifted off to sleep in the uncomfortable hospital chair, that the biggest surprise of all was still to come. A revelation that would test the very limits of her love, forgiveness, and capacity for hope. The morning of the transplant surgery dawned cold and clear, the Boston skyline etched against a pale blue sky. Sarah woke with a start, momentarily disoriented by the harsh fluorescent lights of the hospital room. As the events of the past few weeks came rushing back, she felt a familiar mixture of anxiety and determination settle in her chest. Jack was already awake, his blue eyes clear and focused as he watched Sarah stir. Good morning, beautiful, he said softly, reaching out to take her hand. Sarah squeezed his hand, forcing a smile. Good morning. How are you feeling? Ready, Jack replied, his voice steady. Whatever happens today, we're facing it together. As the medical team began to prep Jack for surgery, Sarah made her way to Lily's room. She found Emily there, dark circles under her eyes betraying a sleepless night. Lily lay in the hospital bed, looking small and fragile, but her eyes lit up when she saw Sarah. Sarah! Lily exclaimed, a smile breaking across her pale face. Is it time? Sarah nodded, wheeling herself to Lily's bedside. It is, sweetheart. Are you ready? Lily's smile faltered slightly, a flicker of fear crossing her face. I'm scared, she admitted in a small voice. What if, what if it doesn't work? Sarah reached out, taking Lily's hand in hers. Listen to me, Lily. You are so strong, stronger than you know. And your dad? He's a fighter too. You both are going to get through this, and we're all going to be right here, cheering you on. As the nurses came to take Lily to the operating room, Sarah felt a surge of emotion. In the short time she'd known her, Lily had carved out a special place in Sarah's heart. The girl's resilience, her quick wit, and the way she'd embraced Sarah as part of her newly expanded family had been nothing short of miraculous. The hours that followed were some of the longest of Sarah's life. She and Emily waited together in the surgical waiting room, an unlikely pair united by their love for Jack and Lily. They alternated between anxious silence and quiet conversation, sharing stories of Jack and finding common ground in their shared experience of loving someone with a chronic illness. It was during one of these conversations that Emily turned to Sarah, her eyes filled with a mix of gratitude and guilt. I can't thank you enough, she said softly, for everything you've done, for being so understanding. I know this can't be easy for you. Sarah was quiet for a moment, considering her words carefully. It hasn't been easy, she admitted, but love isn't always easy. It's about choosing to stand by someone, to fight for them, even when things get complicated. And Jack, Lily, they're worth fighting for. As the afternoon wore on, Dr. Chen finally emerged from the operating room, her face tired but her eyes bright. The surgery was successful, she announced, a smile breaking across her face. Both Jack and Lily are doing well. We'll need to monitor them closely for the next few days, but the initial signs are very positive. 
The relief that washed over Sarah was so intense, she felt lightheaded. She and Emily embraced, tears of joy and exhaustion mingling as they absorbed the good news. The days that followed were a blur of recovery rooms, medication schedules, and cautious optimism. Jack and Lily were placed in rooms next to each other, allowing for frequent visits as they both regained their strength. Sarah found herself constantly moving between the two rooms, offering encouragement, relaying messages, and marveling at the bond that was forming between father and daughter. It was during one of these visits, about a week after the surgery, that Sarah overheard a conversation that would change everything once again. She was approaching Jack's room, a fresh bouquet of flowers in her lap when she heard Lily's voice, unusually serious. Dad, there's something I need to tell you, something Mom and I found out just before we came to Boston. Sarah paused outside the door, her heart racing. She knew she shouldn't eavesdrop, but something in Lily's tone made her hesitate. What is it, sweetheart? Jack's voice was gentle, encouraging. There was a long pause, and then Lily spoke, her words coming out in a rush. You're not my biological father. Mom did a DNA test when we were trying to find a kidney donor, and it showed that her high school boyfriend after you, Tom, is actually my biological dad. But you are my real dad, the one who saved my life. I just... I thought you should know the truth. The silence that followed was deafening. Sarah felt as though the ground had dropped out from beneath her. After everything they had been through, all the sacrifices and emotional turmoil to find out that Jack wasn't actually Lily's father, she was about to turn away to give Jack and Lily privacy to process this bombshell when she heard Jack's response. Lily, he said, his voice thick with emotion, listen to me. Biology doesn't make a father. Love does. Commitment does. I may not have been there for the first 14 years of your life, but I'm here now, and I'm not going anywhere. You're my daughter, no matter what any test says. Uh, okay? Sarah felt tears streaming down her face as she heard Lily's muffled sobs and Jack's soothing words. Taking a deep breath, she composed herself and entered the room, determined to support her family through this latest twist in their journey. The revelation about Lily's paternity sent shockwaves through their already complicated family dynamic. Emily was devastated, racked with guilt over the years of secrecy and the recent upheaval in everyone's lives. Jack, despite his brave words to Lily, struggled with a complex mix of emotions, relief that his past mistakes hadn't resulted in an abandoned child, guilt over that very relief, and a fierce determination to be the father Lily needed regardless of biology. Sarah found herself in the unexpected role of mediator and support system for everyone involved. She held Emily as she cried, reassured Jack of his place in Lily's life, and reminded Lily that she was loved unconditionally by all of them. As the days turned into weeks and Jack and Lily grew stronger, a new normal began to emerge. The initial shock of the paternity revelation gave way to open, honest conversations about the nature of family and the power of choosing love over obligation. It was during one of these conversations, as they all sat in the hospital garden enjoying a rare warm day, that Jack turned to Sarah with a look of wonder. You know, he said, his voice soft but filled with conviction, I think I finally understand what you meant on our wedding day about facing whatever comes our way together. I never could have imagined this, any of this, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Sarah reached out, taking his hand in hers. Neither would I, she replied, looking around at their unconventional family, Emily chatting animatedly with Lily, the two of them giggling over some shared joke, and Jack, his eyes bright with love and newfound purpose. As Lily's discharge date approached, they all began to grapple with what came next. Emily and Lily's life was in Chicago, but the idea of being separated from Jack now seemed impossible to all of them. It was Lily who eventually proposed a solution. What if, she said hesitantly during one of their family dinners in Jack's hospital room, what if mom and I moved to Boston? Not right away, but maybe after I finish this school year, that way we could all be together. 
The room fell silent as everyone considered the implications of Lily's suggestion. Sarah looked at Jack, seeing the hope and fear warring in his eyes. She then turned to Emily, who appeared equally conflicted. Taking a deep breath, Sarah spoke up. I think that's a wonderful idea, Lily. If that's what you and your mom want, Jack and I would love to have you here in Boston. Emily's eyes widened in surprise. Sarah, are you sure this is... It's a lot to ask. Sarah shook her head, a small smile playing on her lips. It's not asking. It's offering. We're family now, all of us. It might not be conventional, but when has anything about our story been conventional? The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of planning and preparation. As Jack continued his recovery, growing stronger every day, Sarah threw herself into researching schools for Lily and helping Emily explore job opportunities in Boston. They found a house not far from Sarah and Jack's apartment, with a ground floor that could be easily adapted for wheelchair access. On the day of Lily's discharge, as they all gathered in her hospital room for one last time, Dr. Chen pulled Sarah aside. I've been doing this job for a long time, she said, her eyes twinkling, and I've seen all kinds of families, but I have to say, what you've all created here, it's something special. The love and support you have for each other, it's more healing than any medicine we could prescribe. Sarah felt a warmth spread through her chest at Dr. Chen's words. Thank you, she said softly. We're still figuring it out, but... But that's what family is, Dr. Chen finished for her, figuring it out together. As they left the hospital, Jack pushing Lily's wheelchair while Sarah and Emily followed close behind, Sarah was struck by how far they had come. From that chance meeting at the farmer's market to this moment, their lives had been turned upside down in ways she never could have imagined. There would be challenges ahead, she knew. Blending their families, navigating the complexities of co-parenting, continuing to manage Jack's health issues, none of it would be easy. But as she looked at the people around her, at the family they had forged through love, sacrifice, and unwavering support, Sarah knew that they could face anything life threw their way. As they stepped out into the bright Boston sunshine, ready to embark on the next chapter of their extraordinary journey, Sarah was filled with a sense of hope and excitement for the future. Their love story might not have followed a traditional path, but it was theirs, with all its twists and turns, surprises and challenges. And as Jack turned to her, his eyes shining with love and gratitude, Sarah knew that she wouldn't have it any other way. This was their happily ever. If you enjoyed this story, press on another video you see on the screen for more amazing tales. Until next time.